You know, I don't know what homophobic ass black person needs to hear this, but homosexuality is not the agenda that's here to destroy the black community. I don't even think homosexuality is remotely a problem in the black community. If anything, it has moved us forward several times, but y'all don't understand your own history and refuse to learn it. So here we are. I don't think gayness, homosexuality, or any member of the LGBTQ community has ever been a problem as to what we talk about is the grander scale of why black people can't move forward and unite. It's not gay people's fault. You know what is a problem in the black community? Toxic masculinity amongst black men that make them insatiably violent toward black women. That might be a problem. You just punched your, your, your sixth baby mama in the motherfucking face, but you worried about that gay man. It's probably because you want to fuck him because he look good in a dress and you confused about it, but let's go on and talk about something else. Because I know y'all not worried about gay people, sir. Why are you worried about studs taking your women? You don't even like grown women. You like little ass girls. You and your weird ass homeboys posted up outside of a high school picking out freshmen that you want. You're 35 with a 15 year old ass girlfriend. That might be a problem in the black community. Yeah. Now, this is the conversation. But many of us are not ready for it though, but we're going to have this conversation regardless. In Nigeria, people are worried about homosexuality and what people like Bobriski are doing and not doing. But we can barely afford Gary in the market. Tomato now, like five seed of it, they're telling you is 500 Naira, but yeah, let's worry about the gays. Mm -hmm. We barely see electricity in the house, but yeah, the gays are the problem. That's what we should, you know, focus all our energy at. The news that we are getting back to back to back to back to back about what pastors and ministers and priests are doing to little boys and girls. The other day, I saw a video of a priest that gave a, a mass server knock on the head. I'm going to make a video on that particular video, a separate video on that particular video, because that's a conversation we need to have. Hell, I probably will even take it to live because we really need to have a conversation on that video. And I know some people right now might be thinking, oh, what did the little boy do? He probably deserved it. First of all, nobody deserves to get knocked on the head like that. Not to talk about a boy of this age. That grown ASS man put his back into that knock. All the strength he had in him, he channeled it to the knock that he gave that little boy. But if we want to get down to the reason why he did it, the reason is so stupid, you guys cannot even begin to imagine. The way my blood boiled when I was watching that video, not only because that little boy did not deserve to get knocked like that, but also because of the stupid reason why that boy got knocked on the head like that. And how nobody stood up for the boy, adults all around, but nobody stood up for him. This madness has got to stop. This abusing of children that some people think is normal has got to stop. Literally a priest abusing a little boy, gave him a knock on the head. In church, nobody batted an eye. But, but yeah, let's worry about the gays. Let's worry about the gays. They are the problems you have in our community. Insecurity, but the gays. All of these things and more happening. You barely see vehicles outside these days when you step outside because nobody can afford fuel. What people call petrol in the Western world, right? But yeah, it's the gays. <laughs> it's the gays. Let's focus on the gays. Then people are bringing GMOs to Africa and the non-entities we have as government officials, so-called leaders of the people, are letting them do this. But what about the gays? Let's focus on the gays. That's what's most important, right? 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 A problem in the black community. Uh, ain't y'all doing drive-by sucker punches in New York? Why the fuck is you worried about gay people? A problem in the black community. You, <laughs> you got to this homeboy that you ain't turned in. This is fifth time doing it. You ain't said, but it's gay people. Mm. That's very interesting. And let's not forget the greatest family members, those weird people that we had to grow up watching our family members protect and act like they don't know what these people be doing. When you have your son and the homosexual him, then you will understand. So straight men are not young girls. We don't have matured women touching young boys inappropriately. No, let's keep these things 100% because unlike you guys, I don't operate on cognitive dissonance. Young boys are getting inappropriately touched by straight women, but you guys don't want to have that conversation though. You people have successfully stereotyped gay people, making them into people who 
young boys, acting as if your fathers, your uncles, your pastors and priests, your cousins, your neighbors, who are straight men, are not young girls. Since when it comes to the topic of homosexuality, you people love to operate on the logic one bad apple spoils the bunch, me as a straight woman, I want to know, when would all straight men be stereotyped as as well? Do we have evidence of straight men, young girls and women? Yes, we have a plethora, both online and offline. So when are we evening out the scale and banning straightness? That's what this straight woman wants to know. You people want to get rid of evil. I am 100% down with getting rid of evil. I don't care if the evil is being perpetrated by a straight person or a gay person. We need to get rid of evil, period. But obviously, you people are not ready to get rid of evil because you people want to pick and choose the evil you want to get rid of based on your biases. When you people are truly ready to get rid of evil, call me. Homophobic black women, don't y'all go nowhere either. Y'all worried about these bisexual men. It's a lot of y'all out there making that little clout chasing ass content. You worried about bisexual men, but you raising your three year old son to be your husband. Clock that tea. Clock it. Clock that tea. Clock it. Clock that tea. Clock it. Yeah, let's talk about the um boy moms. I know I'm not talking about boy moms as but boy um, moms that have um boy babies or boy children i'm talking about boy moms those ones that treat their kids like they are their boyfriend that have this weird relationship that like they're all over the internet i'm sure we know them in real life we know one or two in real life i don't know what weird ass boy mom need to hear this but stop calling your son sexy daddy i'm looking at you sideways okay because ain't no reason why y'all using these adjectives to describe these grown men on y'all sons, okay? He's not a fine-ass little boy. That's weird, okay? Because let a grown-ass man say, ooh, look at that sexy mama. She going to be something when she get older. All bets is off. Now he's, now he's a predator. Ain't no double standard in that. Stop being weird. I personally have witnessed a mother and another woman discussing her child's wee-wee talking about how big it is this baby was two this baby was two talking about oh if it's this big at this age imagine how it would look if he's 15. talking about the things he would go on to do with it and how we may not go let this one rest oh this is a legit encounter that i witnessed myself and i was just there like this is so inappropriate. These clips of mine in black and white that are incorporated into this video are old clips of mine from TikTok. I have been having these conversations on there for a very, very good while now. These conversations that most people seem to not want to talk about or don't want to even admit that we have these issues in our society. So whenever I come by people who are willing to and want to have these conversations and point out these insanities, these diabolical behaviors in our society that people are acting like they are okay. Not everybody, of course, right? There are people who are like, no, this is weird. But there are people who also see behaviors like this and to them, oh, it's not that deep. Oh, whenever you are calling them out, oh, you are doing too much. Oh, I beg rest, take a chill pill. Like, it's not that serious. And not only do they not see these behaviors as something serious that needs to be dead, they also encourage these behaviors because nobody wants to talk about or care about or even think about the negative ripple effects of how these behaviors, this bad foundation, that these kids are getting how is it going to be affecting society at large what behaviors are we going to be seeing from these children that is going to be because of the foundation that they got but back to the boy mom phenomenon but first of all these issues just to be clear they are issues that you would find in every community right but of course because i am obviously an african black person and we are black people um, we talk about our communities, right, and the issues within our communities. So this conversation is narrowed to us as a people and our community, right? But these are issues that you would find across all communities as well. Like, for example, now this lady, she's a white lady. She was talking about the exact same thing in this video, right? But she narrowed it down to her community. She used examples of people in her community for her video. And her video I'm going to play as well because she did 
um, break down the boy mom phenomenon in a very nice way that I think I want to share to you guys in this video, especially for people who are maybe just hearing about the terminology for the first time, or maybe even what a boy mom is, they've never met one before, which is possible, or maybe they are just hearing about the concept of boy moms for the first time and they are still trying to figure out exactly what it means because this video is not really like focused on boy mom specifically so we cannot really break down the boy mom phenomenon so her video is a quick video to help us all understand better what boy moms are and what they are about but if after this video you still don't have like a hundred understanding about what it's about or you are still like unsure of what it's about um there are articles out there on the particular phenomenon the boy mom phenomenon there are people who have done like deep dives on it um you can find them on youtube and tiktok so um you can go check those videos out as well but here's her video though the emotional incest that surrounds this TikTok boy mum trend is truly alarming. Boy mums, not to be confused with women who have sons, treat their boys like their spouses. The behaviour is this kind of no one's going to love you as much as I will kind of vibe. They refer to their sons growing up and leaving the home as a breakup. They set up these loving scenes with quotes like you'll be his first kiss, his first love, positioning the future partners as rivals to the mother. Or in this meme where they just straight up criticise their toddler's imaginary future wife's cooking skills. These mums are trying to raise the husbands that they never had, seeking the emotional emotional fulfillment that the husband should provide, but instead putting it onto the son. This is the tragedy that is emotional incest, where the parent relies on the child to meet the emotional needs that's usually fulfilled by the adult partner. The parent's needs comes first, boundaries are blurred, guilt ensues, probed for even right. If this struck a chord with you, then follow for more, because if you scroll away, you're never going to be able to find me again. Homophobic black women, don't y'all go nowhere either. And when it comes to homophobia for me, especially when they're like, um, women that have been homophobic, he it, it's just something that I have always wondered, like, what is the thought process behind it personally? Like, it's something that I've thought about severally. Because, like, do you know how many times we've heard stories of women that found out in marriages that they are married to gay men? As a woman, when I think about the side effects of homophobia, I mean, there are many side effects of homophobia, but there's the side effects of it's women that bear the brunt of homophobia collectively and i'm not even saying no oh, it's homophobic women that bears this consequences sometimes it can be someone who, who isn't even homophobic because what you're having is in a society where you don't let people be who they want to be again as long as they are not hurting anybody they're not breaking any laws they're not committing any crime when you don't let these people live in their truths as long as your truth is not hurting anyone so when you have a, a, a community or a society where people are shamed, hunted down even sometimes, unalived, beaten on the streets, it happens for who they love, because of who they love or how they present themselves in the world. You now have a situation where, of course, people who are like this, because they know the world is not a loving place and would not accept them, they have to hide. They have to marry somebody and hide. Guess who this men these gay men are going to get married to in an attempt to hide their gayness from society they are going to start pretending and marrying women and now you are going to find yourself which has happened numerous times you know how many stories i've heard even only in this nigeria cover the video of this lady from the u.s she found out after how many years with her husband her husband is gay that man basically was using her to hide from the public. And now a woman is in pain, crying, suffering because of this. Like people don't even think about the, uh, the, the side effects, the aftermath, the ripple effect of these behaviors and how at the end of the day, it even affects women. If you want to hear more about that situation, I'm going to be listing, linking that video down below in the description. And another thing for me when it comes to this topic of homophobia, I have said it, I, I think, on my TikTok. So I usually get comments like this, people wanting to know what I think or feel about gay people or the LGBT community as a whole. And usually I just ignore them. But goodness gracious, the way the LGBT community lives in you people's heads rent-free, I personally do not get it. It's giving obsessed. Like I literally could be talking about, I don't know, the moon. And somebody would come into the comment section and ask me, what do you think about gays? The f 
I'm talking about the moon. What's, what's the correlation? But since you asked, I am not anti-gay. I could not give half a f what adults choose to do with their bodies or who they choose to be intimate with. It's none of my business. I am not a homophobe either. I do not partake in the stereotyping, discriminating, and hating of people based on their sexuality, especially when those people are African people or are of African descent. Being black and African is already hard enough, so I am never going to partake in any activity whatsoever that is going to put an extra layer of pain on another black person. And this one personally gets to me especially as a black person, as an African person, knowing the pain that we go through on a daily basis and all of the things that we've had to go through histor historically, that now black people make life difficult for other black people just because of their sexuality. You, you would think that as a black person, you already know that it's like how difficult it is navigating this world as a black person or that black people have to go through on a daily basis what we've been through historically and now you are now putting that extra burden of pain on another black person that's not something i would ever be able to do and this is something that i think about daily like how is that something you can do because i cannot for the life of me do that I cannot make the life of another black person any more difficult than it has to be. I'm not going to be the cause, the, the reason why another black person have to be in pain and, and stress and have heartache and not feel safe in society. It's, it's never going to be me. So it's crazy to me that there are people out there that, that do it. And I think for me when it comes to this topic of homophobia is how as a people, if we've come to realize just how divisive it is, it's like, it's, it's as if we don't have enough things in our community dividing us. Now, we have to bring homophobia into it and divide us even further. Homophobic black women, don't y'all go no way either. Y'all worried about these bisexual men. It's a lot of y'all out there making that little clout chasing ass content. You worried about bisexual men, but you raising your three-year-old son to be your husband. He ain't gonna be no heartbreaker. That's your son, not your boyfriend. Stop treating him like that. Y'all got incestuous relationship with y'all sons, but it's gay people's problem. Hmm. Interesting. You got mother wounds so deep that they almost genetic. They part of your goddamn DNA. You beating your daughter into puberty early. You got your you got your baby girl going through puberty at 11 years old because you done turned into your mama. Now you calling her fast because she grown at 15. She ain't fast. That's your f***ing fault. You're abusive. Homophobic black people beating their children like slaves. But y'all worried about my pronouns? Freedom for kids. Speaking of kids, why the f*** y'all keep letting that weird ass uncle around them? I don't think gay people are the problem. I really don't. It might be that funny ass uncle though. Let them babies wear them shorts and keep that from around y'all kids. That might be the mother problem. Yeah. Talk about it. Like, th this is, I see, I see, I'm getting very emotional right now. I'm getting excited right now because this is something that as a kid growing up, I could not understand. I could not understand why I'm at home in a place that is supposed to be a safe space for me where i'm supposed to feel the most protected and now i have to go change from the shorts i have on to something longer something bigger something that would not show my my figure as a kid as as an 11 year old as a 12 year old as an 8 year old as a 15 year old because one random uncle is coming over one distant cousin is coming over. Now I have to cover myself up. It's, it, it's the burden of my protection now is put on me. No. How about I don't, don't bring that man to the house? Like if you don't even trust this person, why are you opening your doors for them? Why are they coming in here? Your kids are in here. Now I, I have to be the one to go cover up in my house because you are bringing someone that you think could be a predator, a predator home. Like let's make it make sense let's let's make it make sense i as a kid have to go cover up because a grown-ass man that can possibly not control himself is coming home why are you bringing someone that you think might look at me funny into the house why i 
I swear right now, like my inner child is, is, is like crying. Like I'm so, I, I'm, I'm barely even trying to contain myself for this video. And this is a video I've seen before. And that's how pissed I was. I'm seeing this video now again. And it's like, I'm even getting more pissed than I was the first time I saw the video. Because I like, it, it's just, it's just so, <laughs> it's just so much. Like some of the things, are, oh my, oh my goodness. Like thinking about the people that, that that I should not have been around as a kid growing up. None of them were gays. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> One was even a, a, a deacon in church in the sacristy. And maybe I don't even know if I'm going to be adding this aspect of the video into this video, if it's going to make it to YouTube because like sharing personal stories and experiences, like it's not something I'm comfortable doing. When I see people sharing traumatic stories online or sharing personal experiences online, like I really hand it to them because like it's something that is, it's not easy for me to do because I grew up with this mentality of don't spread dirty linen outside. <sighs> Just like I want to talk about it, but I can't talk about it. I know I've never seen a therapist in my life and I probably should. And I, but then I don't know if I would ever be able to share anything with a therapist because I'm not used to talking about anything in my life. It's like not even being safe in church. And just to be clear, nothing happened to me. I wasn't arrow worded or anything, but there are creeps there and I encounter them. Like I know stories, not even only about myself, but of other children. And there was, there's definitely more than that that happened. So you can only just imagine. They, they were not gays. Oh. And that's how I did not share the story because I still can't. I... But I want to, but I can't. But yeah, it's the gays that's the problem. It's the gays. Ma'am, you got a bum that f on your kids living on your couch and you won't listen to them and kick them out because you'd rather have a man than a good relationship with your children. You might want to worry about that. Y'all could worry about that funky ass white Jesus that enslaved your ancestors who somehow y'all got convinced that are demons. Y'all might want to worry about that. Daily, we have to sit on TikTok and listen to black people talk about how their ancestors, the people that came before them, the people that because of them, they exist today because if those people had not existed, survived, they would not be in existence. We have to daily sit on TikTok and listen to these people talk about how they are demons. But no, Abraham is not a demon though because they call themselves the, 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 the children of Abraham even though Abraham is a Middle Eastern man and how could that have been your ancestor? Let's make these things make sense. Maybe we should start bringing biology into it. How can you as a black person be descended from an East and um, Middle Eastern man? How? They call on Abraham daily, oh, the God of Abraham. That's not demonic. But the person that actually gave birth to the person that gave birth to the person that gave birth to the person that gave birth to you is demonic. You can't call on that name. Daily um, Catholics, um, African Catholics be having different, different feasts for the different, different European saints that they be, they be pedestalizing and celebrating. It's like almost every day. I'm, this is coming from someone that, that was, that's from a Catholic background. I'm from a Catholic household. Baptized and confirmed. Yeah, yeah, looking at her. If it's not St. Stephen's Feast, it's St. Anthony's Feast. If it's not St. Anthony's Feast, it's St. Teresa's Feast. If it's not that, it's St. Paul, it's St. Bartholomew. It's, it's all the saints daily. If it, it's almost every day they are celebrating a particular European. Calling on his name, pedestalizing him. Those ones are not demonic. But let me talk about my ancestors all of a sudden. Oh, I'm demonic. I'm an answer Christ. I was born in hell. I pour libation, there is a problem. That's demonic. That's backward. That's a satanic activity. I light a candle, there is a problem. They'll be lighting candles all over the altar, though. No, it's fine. As long as it's associated with white Jesus and any, uh, all, all things colonizers, that's, a, that's okay. But if I build a little altar in my house now and put a candle there, oh, if you is burning in hell, she's associated with the devil. Oh, my goodness, this is, this is some antichrist-ish. You are calling on demons, you are calling on evil spirits. When it's African, it's evil and bad. But as long as it's associated with them colonizers and wise Jesus, 
is good. <laughs> I can list over 50 cents off the top of my head. Ask me to list 50 um, names of my ancestors. I can't. That's what they've done to us. In my head, a lot of things that I have in my head, like I know in my head the litany of the Blessed Virgin. What you consign me with the Virgin? What, what's my business? Well, ask me to list maybe in my head the litany of the names of my ancestors. I don't know past my, my own present son name. The end. I don't even know the name. I don't even know my, my, my grandparents' first name. I don't even know my grandfather's first name on my father's side. I don't even know, now that I think about it, my grandfather's first name on my mother's side. I don't know my grandma's first name on my father's side. At least I know my grandma's first name on my mom's side. But that's it. The parents before that, no idea. But back to back to back, I know what the saints do. They have absolutely nothing to do with me. Could not give a damn about me. I know all of them. And the fact that I would not be ever able, I would not be able to ever get those things out of my head. I think that makes me even more angry. It's forever going to be taking up space in my head. Forever. But what is really important to me and my identity, where I'm from, the people that actually did care about me, zero, zero information about them. Even be knowing all the way down to like a um, birthday of saints, what, where they were born, what they did with their, oh my goodness, what they did with their life. The so-called good that they did that made them sense. How they live, where they were born, uh, how they schooled, um, how, how eventually they became priests. Before Kini Kini Kini, they became sense. Know their storyline, know their history, but don't know the history of my ancestors, though. Don't know how they lived, though. That wasn't passed down to me because it's not important. It's some random sense. Anthony of Padua. That's what I should care about. I'm so angry right now. I'm not even going to lie. Like, so, so angry right now. I started this day in a, in a happy mood, to be honest. I filmed a video before filming this video. And I said in that video that I woke up, like, in a, in a particular mood, happy, excited. And that mood, like, followed me all through the day. So I filmed that video while still in that mood. And now, after filming that video, I was like, okay, maybe I should film this other video. I'm like, oh, this is, maybe I should talk about this. And now I'm talking about it, and I'm getting very annoyed. <laughs> and I can't believe I started my day so excited and happy and full of life. And, and now I'm, I'm ending my day sad. And I basically did this to myself. It's so annoying because I could have done this another day, but, but it wouldn't make any difference though. Because I still would have ended up here with, with these emotions and this... Anyways, let's continue. Ma'am, you ought to worry about that fucking respectability politics and why you got white people thinking you wearing a bonnet in public is bad. Worry about that. Worry about that. Worried about the political illiteracy in our community, not gay people. Y'all ain't got no fucking clue what's going on. Y'all just going out and voting and then wondering why shit ain't getting better for us. Worry about that. Yeah, worry about that. I want to talk about the topic of polit um, political illiteracy like we go day yet see. Worry about why y'all can't advance. Y'all out here just facing generational curses and just recreating them, but you're worried about gay people. I don't think gay people are the problem. I really don't. I really, really, really don't. Y'all giving y'all fucking money to Creflo Dollar, but you worried about pronouns. Hmm. Interesting. I just wanted to know what was wrong with y'all on this fine Sunday. Amen. Amen. And now at the end, I don't think there's anything more that I even have to say or needs to be said. The video said what he said. The brother did his thing and he ate and left no crumb. There are bigger fish to fry in this life. Bigger issues to worry about. I can't even say bigger issues to worry about because gay people are not an issue. So scratch that.
there are issues we need to worry about that are actually of importance i feel like i'm still saying the same thing you guys get my point right let's focus on what's important the gaze is not the problem 